Hey everybody. I haven't gone live in a really long time. I think like a year. So now I'm here and I just felt like going live. So uh, I'm just going to show stacks of random books I've got over the last couple weeks. And, and then I'm going to go to sleep and that's it. So um, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's start with some floppies. Oh, look at that. Let's start with some floppies. I'll track this in both places. Um, first, uh, let's start out with a an active member of the community. Um, one of the few comic creators that I think, aside from um, Ignacio, of course, who's act, who actually worked with uh, Travis. Um, you know, one of the few creators I think would actually be in the community if he wasn't a writer. His book came out in Band of, Bo uh, Band of Bards. Um, you know, he's a very experienced Kickstarter guy. Uh, I love it that I can start ordering his stuff um, on, uh, you know, through my comic shop instead of like $18 single issues. And Quinn Judas was really good. Number two came out. Uh, I bought both covers. Um, you know, th these showed up right when we were going to drive to Disneyland, and then I came right back to work, so I haven't read them yet, but they're going to the top of the pile, along with Tom King, and the X-Men, and the Star Wars books that I always read first, no matter what. Um, oh, look at that. Uh, see, see, Blake, you didn't know me before. I used to go live all the time. Every now and then I post videos again, but I have kids. I mean, I have something like 700 videos, so... Once upon a time, pre-pandemic, I was a lot more active. Hey, Las Cruces is here. Appreciate that. Uh, <laughs> always from New Mexico. What are you going to do one day when you're on vacation somewhere else? You got to say hello from... You know, I don't know where you would go on vacation. Maybe you would go to, like, Austin, Texas or something like that. I <laughs> uh, appreciate you stopping by. Uh, so I was going to Judas. Um, same sort of group, uh, Brian Hopkins, Brian, uh, Hopkins, sorry, um, Vineyard, this has been good, uh, pretty solid, s straightforward, just really good horror book. Um, for some reason, I, I'm just addicted to Spawn, and I'm always kind of drunk, like, and so I keep buying it, and I even bought this silly cover, you know, there's really no reason, it's not like the, uh, which one am I holding? The uh, trade dress isn't even that big, so it was sort of silly to buy the virgin. But, you know, it was $2.99 minus 35%. Uh, a couple more spawns, and then I'm going to hop over to more card covers and stuff. I don't think I care about... I mean, look, man. One of the things about... So X-Men I still buy week to week. Um, but Star Wars, you know, really, like, in order to save money, since this is a high-volume thing and you're paying more per issue technically when you're buying it new, I should buy all of the serialized stuff that I'm gonna buy. I should do that all on Gmart, but X-Men I buy from the shop, you know, protect the shop, blah, blah, blah. Star Wars, I switched to Gmart, like, you know, I've been ordering for Gmart for years and years now, but man, you get a big step. It's so much easier to read this kind of shit. You know, I might switch back to um, the local shop because it's, you know, even though there's a lot of Star Wars and a lot of X-Men, it's just easy. Even in a heavy day, it's four issues. You know what I mean? But at the end of the month, you know, or once I get to $80 from Gmart, I get like 10, 11 Star Wars books. It's a little bit tough to keep up with, and it starts to feel like work. And when it starts to feel like work, that's when I quit, which is why I haven't done that many YouTube videos in the last year or so. Uh, let's see. What else we got here? I don't want to show any of these. Uh, everything sucks. Yeah, hopefully that's not your real feeling. There's some purgatory, blah, 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 blah. Okay, I think I got through what I want there. Apparently I bought another everything sucks. I wonder if that's a... I think I bought this from the shop, and then this one I pre-ordered. Sometimes I don't remember what the hell I do. Oh, man, I'm not even caught up with the X-Men books from the week before. Um, hey, the Comic Chef. What's up, Comic Chef? I think this is... I haven't done very many videos in the last year or so, and, um, you know, I know I recently followed you, so welcome. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, 
you were debating whether to get drunk uh, vineyard. It's good. You know, it's aftershocks. So the people are shaky about it, but I don't think um, as far as what aftershock done, we certainly shouldn't not buy from them. You know, you still want to support the creator and stuff. But uh, Brian Hawkins really cool. He did um, those books, um, Black, or not that one, I'm sorry, Black Cotton, which was uh, pretty popular among um, the people that read it, which is the nature of this stuff. So this is another one I double bought. Um, I thought that I hadn't pre-ordered this, and I was pretty sure this wasn't going to be on the shelves. And um, so I, I pre-ordered on Amazon, and I got it right away, and then I actually did buy it from Gmart. So the history of Black Cotton. Um, this is really cool. Normally when I buy this kind of stuff, um, I know 90% about it, but there is a, a ton of stuff in here that I did not know about. Um, you know, and before I flipped through this, I would have definitely told you, uh, that I knew a lot about, um, the intersection between, uh, African Americans and punk rock. I shouldn't say African American. There might be, probably be British people in here too, but I don't. There's a lot of cool stuff for me um, that are probably end up on those playlist things I post that no one. I mean, I wouldn't care about them either. It's a comics web. It's a comic. The comic accounts, and I'm putting these playlists of all the weird shit I listen to. So um, I am reading very slowly. I'm reading now. This is from Fanagraphics. This is their like. It's sort of like nicer anthology book. It's a bunch of alt comics and stuff. Ah. I really love this so far. So some great stories are this one from Justin Graven. It's called Wounded Candy. It's a real like sort of shit show kind of book. Just really strange. His his new full graphic novel comes out um, this week, I think. Um, I pre-ordered that from directly from Fanagraphics. And the other one that was really good, um, totally on a different level, which is why I like to read now is uh uh mandorla uh which has its own sort of interesting art and you, this is about sort of like the moments that happened what he remembers or the life that he lives as he's falling off as he just basically slips and falls off a um a cliff right and the art in this was wonderful um you know it psychedelic at times, a couple other things going on here. So I, I still got a little bit more to read on of this, um, but I have enjoyed it. I always like the, oh, this was a, an adaption of an old story here. Um, you know, typically I like the less silly ones, or no, I like the, yeah, the less silly ones more than, uh, more than most of the other ones. So um, a lot of underground comics are just sort of silly though, so. Uh, this is um, Billy Noir. Uh, this is literally in French. I don't read French very well. Um, I'm a little bit better at Polish, which is where my wife, what my wife is, and Spanish. I also don't read those very well either. I read French even worse, but uh, you know it's comics, so you can pick it up. I, I've also, I'm also sort of the guy that I've already gotten used to like struggling through uh, different languages. Um, so a lot of stuff to, a lot of stuff to enjoy here. Uh, I actually got three of these. Um, I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing it right. Bill Noor, whatever. So good stuff. Um, yeah. And I think the reason I bought it and I found other good stuff here, but the reason I bought it, I started to look into these abstract cartoonists and, you know, abstract in the sense that it might as well just be sort of modern art. You can't really even see if there's story going on and this this guy even his name is even something um he actually edited um a book from fanagraphics called abstract comics and that book is out of print and probably wasn't printed that much um and so you know i, I got an interlibrary loan i went through it it was fine um you know but I, i'd really have to like entrench myself in some of this stuff to uh, really, really find what was good about it or really find the good in it. Hey, Ignacio is here. I've already talked about it. Ignacio. I've already talked about you, Ignacio. I need my, I need my views up. So I figure, you know how they say if you cuss too early in a video that uh, YouTube will detect it and will drop you off? I think if you mentioned Ignacio earlier in a video, then your, your views will pump up. I think that's the way it works. So, 
Um, mess up the simulation. Hey, I used to go, I mean, around the time, well, I guess, no, you used to be in my lives all the time. Around the time you showed up in the community was when I was doing more lives um, or more videos in general. Uh, but now I, I don't do shit. Now I just like post during work. Um, also from Floating World Comics, this is dark garbage. Um, <clears throat> you know, I think the name might be ironic. It is a very uh, sort of weird, you could tell that it is, uh, you know, very amateurish kind of cartooning. I wouldn't even call it, you know, sometimes stuff that's drawn like this, uh, for example, sometimes it really is good and thoughtful, even though it has, you know, this kind of art. This one didn't seem, this one seemed uh, to, well, we'll see. We'll see. I haven't read it, so I don't even want to comment on it. But that's dark garbage. That's from Floating World. A little bit weird. Um, uh, so um, I think it was aggressively relaxing. Um, uh, oh, I say fuck all the time, Blake. And I don't know that any of this is true. I mean, sometimes we just make stuff up about the algorithm, and we may be right or wrong. I used to say lives screwed you up. I used to say that doing too many random, and I think big channels realized it, like, you know, uh, uh, Bueller made another channel just to go live and screw around, and people do that, Comic Pop did too, but I used to say that, right, before that they actually divided out your videos and your lives and your shorts, um, and I think YouTube's always been like that, to be honest. Now they just actually give you tabs, so yeah, I think uh, they look out for, and they search for um the things you actually say um i can't remember the but i'm not trying to build an audience so i'm just saying like fuck all i want um um at least not today i'm not oh man now i can't remember what it was i think aggressively relaxing and if it wasn't him he's cool so we'll just give him credit anyway uh told me about just mentioned that there was some kind of sale going on and it was uh not Harlow Court. I can't remember now. Maybe I'll put it in the description later. Um, I probably won't, so, but whatever. Uh, and so a bunch of cool books were on sale. And one of them was this that I only had minor interest in. Um, this is from um, Tom Scioli. So he's like the sort of the third redheaded annoying neighbor stepchild on a cartoonist kayfabe. He's there occasionally. So he did this Jack King Kirby book. They, you know, This came out like right around when the pandemic started. So, you know. It was dead on arrival. I remember um, Ed Piscor saying, you know, for him, he thought this was going to be big uh, for Tom, like his hip hop stuff was big for him. But, you know, there's not a lot of crossover. I mean, a comic fan is going to buy this and they're going to either already know this stuff um, and then just want it in comic form or they're already going to know this stuff and not care about reading it in comic form. Um, but I do think, I think making this, reading about this and all the work that he's done, I do, I would say Tom Scioli is probably one of the, you know, one of the, um, people that knows the most about Jack Kirby. I've just heard him talk. And so, uh, you know, and this, I think was like six bucks. Some of this stuff was, you know, I got, I've already read this, but when I saw it for 11 bucks, I had to pick it up. So, you know, Dead Earth now in the hardcover, which is, which is the problem with buying in singles, you know, you're up to date and everything. But for some of this stuff, you want, you want it in the beautiful hardcover when you've already paid, you know, these were black label books, so they were at least $6.99 each, uh, maybe more. So when you've already paid $6.99 for four issues, you're not like, oh, let me get the hardcover. But now, when you see it for 11 bucks, you just do it. And now I have it. So, and I thought these were, by the way, I thought these were used. So this one didn't come in any kind of packaging, but it looks new from 10 Speed Press. Um, and no, they're not even remaindered or anything. So uh, that was one. That Jack Kirby book was another one. Uh, Prison Pit is something I know um, tangentially. I, I haven't heard very many people talk about it or anything. It's another sort of fan of graphics, alt comics type book. Uh, it's number three. So I don't know. You know, I got it because it was really cheap, like three bucks. This is another one I just got because it was like two or three bucks. So Lone Wolf 2100. I haven't finished regular Lone Wolf, but I probably won't get into this. But uh, uh, Lone Wolf and Cub. So, you know, this is uh, its own silly little thing. Let's see. Uh, Ignacio, you got to write Cole's coattails. Cole's done well with the shorts. 
Uh, I remember you going live often, and if you mention me in your stream, you basically summon me like Candyman. Uh, but it's just because I'm sweet. Yeah, well, you are. I did say your name three times, and it was more of a Bloody Mary thing, I think. Uh, now, did, now, did he... Oh, no, yeah, he's definitely... No, he didn't do the Stan Lee side of the story. He's definitely a Jack Kirby guy. Uh, this is... This is Samus from... Uh, Metroid, from you know, Super Metroid, uh, the greatest game in history, or at least the game that was the first time I had an emotional response to something. You know, played a lot of Mario, played a lot of Sonic, played you know Super Metroid would have come, you know, played Castlevania, so a lot of great games. Not the first great game I played. Um, I'm trying to think of other stuff, but Super Metroid, that ending, man, that's the first time where you felt it, where you knew where a video game could be something bigger than just a game, right? It could also be cinematic or its own art. Uh, what's going on with this guy over here? Ed also thought his mouse homage was going to be big. Uh, I keep forgetting, people that didn't, you know, it's sad when, like, so number one, he didn't do the mouse homage. His his homie Jim Rugg did, you know, and uh, it was for his book. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's funny how that's still news to people that don't watch any cartoonist KK. But I keep forgetting about it. But if I uh, talk about it to a general audience, they bring it up. You know, I think it was in bad taste, but I also didn't think it was that crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, see. <laughs> but, you know, then again, all the homages that they did before that of classic indie books or cla what I would call k books, you know, obviously it was literally homages to them. Uh, except in the context of Red Room, which is, you know, the probably their bigger book that came out at the time. You know, at the end of the day, though, you know, you can think back, you'd be like, oh, I've seen a couple eight ball. I've seen a couple Love and Rockets homages. I've seen, you know, they did the Spawn homage or whatever, right? I've seen those not not too often that anyone's doing a mouse homage because of, you know, the content of the book. It was probably a mistake, but I'm sure that they didn't, you know, I'm sure that it was one of those many times where um, people didn't consider it impact and only considered their intention. Um, uh, 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 let's see what. Uh, did you like Metroid Prime? I saw they re-released it. Yeah, I'm thinking about getting it. So about the time I stopped playing video games in the early 2000s was when I owned Prime, and it was like I was like influx in my life. Uh, like leaving where my mom lived and moving back to LA, that kind of thing. So left the GameCube, and then I've never, I never owned a system since I moved to Poland, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I never owned a gaming system after the PS2 and GameCube um, uh, era. And literally four or five months ago, I bought a Switch because I, you know, I play Mario with my kid, and we'll start playing some family games there. And uh, so that's the first video game system I bought since then. Uh, well, he just did the Stan Lee comic. This is now a couple years old, but he's a big fan of them both. I mean, I know they ended up enemies, but I mean, in general, people can find the truth in between, in between both of them. So yeah, he's doing the Stan Lee because he's done uh, the Jack Kirby. And if I know him well enough, he's he's going to show Stan in okay light, um, but it's not going to be the Stan Lee version of marketing version of the story or the story we all believed before the 90s um he is promoting it now red room it was wild it's still going on it just got really boring really boring really fast um some other books that were there that i don't know i just you know i saw the publisher and they were cheap two bucks to uh the squirrel machine uh this looked uh pretty interesting and promising and then you know this was literally like two or three bucks hardcover. I know it's before watching and everyone hates this. Um, uh, but uh, I bought it anyway if it was cheap and why not? I just grab anything that says watching. Batman Year One, I think this was eight bucks. And it actually, it comes with a DVD. Why were these things on sale? They didn't have a huge selection, but they had a whole bunch of stuff I wanted. Uh, <clears throat> I can't remember what it's called. I hope it's not in French. Oh, no. Yeah, it's not. Okay. You know, and it comes with the uh, the movie, I mean, the Blu-ray and the DVD and year one. I've never actually read year one because, I don't know, 
I've never had. Uh, Rorschach, this was another one just like the um, it's like the other book that I just showed that, uh, you know, I've read it. I would love to have the hardcover, and then I saw it for under 10 bucks, so I got it. Uh, and this is uh, very underrated. So this, you know, as much as Alan Moore hates it and as much as bad stuff has been churned out of it, from what I know or what I've read, this is really good, although it does get a little slow in the middle, but just like Watchmen. And, and I haven't finished it, but I can tell it is really good. It's the Watchmen TV show, and then, um, and then of course, Watchmen. So those are probably the best Watchmen material. Um, this is supposed to, Tom King said that this is supposed to happen in the Watchmen TV show world, which more or less is supposed to happen in the Watchmen world. Um, but I don't think they pay attention to any of the other stuff. Um, so this is pretty cool. Oh man, there's someone. I'm glad someone does. I, I have to say, I haven't read a single before watching book, so I don't really know, um, if it is good. You know, I liked the first six issues of Doomsday Clock. I had, then I had multiple people tell me that those were pretty good. They were okay. If you can, you know, get off your... Uh, anti, you know, anti anything that involves Watchmen horse. And then apparently the next six were terrible. I haven't gotten to those yet. So, um, let's see. I started off with Atari 2600 and now you have a PS, PS5. It's come a long way. But did you, did you buy every generation though? Did you have one of them from every generation? That's what I'm curious about. I had the Atari where it was just four sports games and you had to set it on your lap. You know, I was, I mean, I was past my age, you know, that was past my age level then, but uh, um, someone else had it, but we had that one later on. Nintendo, I would say, is technically the age range I am where uh, I picked it up. So I won this um, during uh, Old Wolf's um, uh, Cancer Charity 24-hour stream, and um you know, we, we had a bunch of family stuff going on, so I was able to get on in the morning, uh, but then not so much in the evening. And uh, I want to just say that, you know, people were price tagging, price tagging, price tagging. <clears throat> I was going to price tag because there's a lot of people that hadn't read it. Um, but uh, John, I have to give credit to John's comic book kids because he put it like sort of an end. He goes, if you guys want to price tag or give it away, do it off air or something like that. So I didn't, right? I didn't say anything. I figured oh, I would give it away or I'd figure that, but I'm lazy, so I never find out. But then when it came in, it's so beautiful. Uh, I just want to thank John's Comics with Kids for stopping me from doing something stupid uh, by doing something nice for someone else in the community um, because I'll actually cherish this. This is very awesome. And it was actually Old Wolf that gave it away. So, um, And that was a great dream. I'm really happy that that worked out for Old Wolf too because we had just gotten done with a big, big charity. Uh, when I say we, I don't mean me. I mean, um, you know, people actually put in the work and did an awesome job. Um, and so I thought it was going to be a little bit too close. And it wasn't, you know, the community came out again. And they do, you know, they do all the time, which is uh, really awesome about it. So um, it's not all, all just great ones got some solid goods. They're individual stories, right? Let's see. So did you finally buy, but if I read Black Sad, it'll end up being, because those don't get cheap and they're just the retail price. You know, I spent a lot of time trying not to pay retail prices. Um, the All the Black Sad, though, is uh, for us is on Hoopla. So I've been, I read a lot of the European stuff on Hoopla. Um, and I always think, if I don't have a Euro book here, but I always think it's sort of the best, if you're going to read something digitally, I always think it's sort of the best stuff to read digitally. Because you're, this is not a Euro comic, but it's, you know, I would say 85% of the time they stay in panel. There's no, like, you know, weird image dynamic panel or anything like that or some of the weirder stuff that American comics and manga do. So if I do read Black Sad, it will probably end up being on, uh, on Hoopla. Um, look at this. Gore Vidal, thank you. Is it morning in Texas? What time is it? 10.50? You're probably central time, yeah. So for me, it's 10.51, so it's the evening still. Um, we're younger over here on the West Coast, so uh, I've been uh, I've been good. 
Do you think I haven't been good? <laughs> Have I showed up on any obituaries or anything? Um, you know, every PlayStation. That's actually cool. Some of ours just broke. Like our PS2 just broke. Um, oh, I got a ton of library books. I just decided not to show them. I so um, the channel called uh, the Mad Respect called me out because I ha I still have two videos worth of my top books uh, that I read of 2022 to do. <laughs> he asked me if I was going to finish it. So, you know, he called me out and that probably even inspires me to do it. And a lot of those are library books that I rechecked out so that I can show them. But they're literally just sitting in the garage over there. So uh, another book I got, uh, Wordless Books, the original graphic novels. So that's easy to get uh, for me just because um, one, it's, you know, it has a historical bent to it. For those that don't know, comic books didn't start with uh, Fantastic Four. And even those of you that are going deep didn't start with Superman. Um, you know, but so like the Wild Pilgrimage, that see that says 1932. I love it because it has this historical context too in it. Um, you know, and then uh, it's like sort of like the old woodcut sort of style in this one. I'm not sure. I didn't really get to flip through this, but um, you know, probably those vignettes writing about it are more interesting to me. So, and this is from Abrams' book. So, you know, Abrams we don't always necessarily think of as a uh, comic publisher. So, wordless books, and I'm sure uh, many of these are not only American, which is uh, eh, they look like they're going to be always look like uh, Anglo names. So, except for this guy Otto Nuckel. <laughs> Otto Nuckel's not. Who knows? Uh, 1888 to 1955. Jeez. Yeah. He lived just long enough to see his uh, country go really south. Uh, we don't have... I don't even know what Obitz is, so we don't have it in Vegas. I mean, Vegas, we just have prostitutes and Amazon drivers. Uh, uh, yeah. I, I know. I know. Let's think about the modern version of them. Uh, what's, what's next? What's next? And then I got this scumbag loser. I just, I had heard good things about it. It was also very cheap. And I think some of those I went through real fast. And then last but not least is Spa. Uh, I pre-ordered this. There's a, a very good channel, a very, um, you know, I would call him a historian or even a librarian of alt comics and art artsy comics and stuff like that uh, called comic manifesto um probably one of the more especially from a family graphics point of view uh he's in love with gary cross um but uh he's a wonderful channel that you should follow if you want to uh, expand beyond like image and um and the big two you, you just have to like sort of like close your ears when he you know, starts complaining about him, but uh, all the other stuff is really good. So he already read this. He was able to get it from the Fanagraphic store. I had it pre-ordered. Uh, he didn't excite me about it. He thought it was just okay. But these kind of books uh, that are not heavy, that are thick and not heavy on dialogue, and there's like, it's not like there's no dialogue on it. These books are easy to reread. Um, and so this is, I'll probably do that with this one. And I, it, I always find, um, I always find more enjoyment or, you know, more enjoyment or just more understanding of any book when I'm able to reread it. And I so rarely, rarely, rarely reread. So um, to me, it looks like pretty good stuff though. So there we go. Um, obituaries. Let's see. Oh, what? I don't know what I will do with the singles. Obituary, you know, happy to know that issue 66 of Saga is the last one I will buy. And I felt like you said you even liked a couple of them. Um, the, of the last, like, handful. So, uh, I think a lot of people, I think maybe some of the fire fell off of Saga. Because a lot of people are iffy about it. I can tell you this. I enjoyed it a lot better when I was reading the trade, and um, you know, with its comeback, it actually excited me to read it. And I do like it a lot still. It still gets high high grades for me, but um, but yeah, it feels like um, you know, maybe 
it's uh you know some of the reactions have been depressed and it's not if it's because of the long break i get it but it's not because of the long break and everyone forgot about it because a ton of people were talking about it that it was going to come up and i saw a ton of people doing rereads <coughs> of the entire book uh through that you know big cliffhanger so um i think it still has got a lot of promise so but um i'm a you know i'm sad to hear that you're gonna you know you're gonna stop reading your favorite hate read <laughs> simple simon's here shout out to simple simon if we're talking about um if we're talking about contests i don't deserve to win uh you know i've already showed murder falcon that i got from old wolf and uh simple simon prize tag me for black hammer number one which is a series i really like so i appreciate that simon um let's see i don't know what he's doing here this might be like a masturbatory emoji i don't know i don't know what's going on there but thanks for doing that here in my channel uh the fire has dropped locally it was a big seller before the three-year hiatus i mean i think it really just needs to stop going on hiatus um I know so many people that just read it and trade, you know, so I don't know. Uh, last little group of books I'll show. Uh, this is, you know, if you looked at this on eBay, this is Comics Journal 250. Uh, and it has just a whole, you know, on Instagram I showed the, I showed the, um, the table of contents, but there's a whole bunch of good stuff on here. Um, and stuff by the late great Tom Spurgeon, uh, Euro Comics for just a, I mean, basically it feels like they got everything interesting and stuck it into 250. And if you look online, oh, and then one of the things I really wanted here was a uh, a Gekiga old manga uh, artist. This is how this got on my radar was to find, um, I can't remember who it was, but uh, he did. Not the push man. I can't remember who it is, and I can't find it here, so I'm not gonna read the table of contents. But if you just were to look on eBay, this is like they're selling this version of the comic journal for like a hundred or two hundred bucks. I haven't seen it sell for that much, but um, you know, when I saw it, I saw it at the local record store <clears throat> that has though this is something I was looking for just because it was the original translation of um an old alt manga sort of series from the, the 70s from uh Garo. And, uh, and I thought, well, that's out of my reach. But then I found it for eight ninety nine. So there we go. And I flipped through it. it looks like a great, great issue. Um, I also stopped watching Celebrity Housewives with that. Are you okay? Are you okay? Next thing you're going to tell me is you put all your Buffy comics in the shredder. Gore. If you need to talk. You know, email me if you're getting depressed. You know what I mean. What, what? If you're not reading Saga, what, what can you hate for? Um, and then, last but not least, I'm going to show uh, these. I, you know, I was flipping through some boxes, really looking at what I can throw away, and um, I found the. Do I have the Joker in here version of this? I had forgotten all about this, and this is the, just that. You know what amalgam was. I, I love this stuff. What all this kind of stuff was, it was just, you know, a grasp at the time when comics weren't very popular, just before any kind of movies were good, uh, in the mid the mid nineties. And DC did this tangent thing where basically the only thing that is uh, aligned with the regular universe is the name. So they redid a whole bunch of just made um, a whole bunch of characters just completely different. And they were either one shots or maybe uh two issue comics and there were two runs of them so i didn't get them all i could have spent 40 bucks and got like all 18 or something but i just wanted a group of them uh, just to remember what they were so there's the joker that's obviously very different uh the atom is very different some of these i, I read about them a while ago just to remember <clears throat> what the premises were on these i mean they're all completely different premises than what was in the regular story and it, it really didn't grab like the zeitgeist in the way that like Say an album did where people are still looking for those and stuff um but i do think it's uh i do think it's a worthwhile thing other from 97 so 
a worthwhile thing to buy um, if you just like the silliness of the culture. That's Kurt Busiek, Busiek right there. Um, they didn't skip, as is normal with uh, DC, when they do silly things like this, they didn't skip skimp on the um, uh, on the creative team or the writers, at least. That was Dan Juergens. Um, I guess that Carl Kessel is not a, a name that stayed in the uh, popular world. There's Chuck Dixon doing the, you know, the new version of the Secret Six. Uh, Metal Men, Ron Mars is doing Metal Men. That's obviously a very different Metal Men. Uh, John Oster, John Ostrander didn't sort of stay in the mindset of the comic world. Doing Nightwing, Nightwing is completely different. Um, imagine if you, imagine if you did these books now and you made Nightwing and Joker and stuff a girl and whatnot. Uh, and Green Lantern too. Uh, apparently, people didn't realize that you know this kind of stuff was still going on. And I know that it would be like, ah, it would be all right because it's in a separate world. But someone would be pissed about it. There's the Flash. I actually not re I didn't actually didn't realize how many of these are uh, female virgin uh, versions. <laughs> versions. Uh, I'm I'm gonna have to make a short out of that one. I don't know who Todd DeGazzo is. So, and then Doom Patrol also Dan Jurgen. So. Uh, those are all pretty cool. And that's all I got. Buffy is in the house. Did you get through your whole 50 issues of Buffy that you bought on eBay? You know, uh, I think going on probably two years ago or three years ago, you told me that the, um, uh, Mike, that, you know, 30 or 40 issues of the Mike Grell Green Lantern or Green uh, Arrow were available on eBay for real cheap, like 25 or 30 bucks. And I bought him. I go, oh, I'm going to roll right through this. Mike Grell seemed like in the kind of, you know, 80s, 90s writer that I don't, you know, that I wouldn't think is, that sucked. Because I do think a lot of them are not that good. And uh, I still have never gotten to them. So, Bluebird looks like, a, oh, you remember, can see. I read some, Legion. I had a high school friend that loved Legion of Superheroes. And, you know, he started me on books that were way too early because they were just too silly and campy. Um, and that's one that's one of those things that is just either like it or you don't. Or you either want to put the time in or you don't. Uh, yeah, Bluebird's a little bit newer, though. <laughs> a little bit. So I, there's actually some of these tangent books that look more interesting to me, and I, I didn't get them. I just got, a, you know, the big enough stack that was affordable. I think it probably cost me 10 bucks. And I know for sure the Joker was the one I already had, so that one took it up. Anyway, guys, that's all I got. I just wanted to throw some random stuff out there. Um, so uh, uh, thanks for stopping by, especially some of the people that used to stop by when I would do this kind of crap. So I'm glad I'm glad you still have the bell icon on for me. But most likely you just forgot to turn it off because I haven't been doing any lives or anything like that for a while. So. Uh, appreciate it. Thanks for hanging out and I will see you guys next time.